Let's look at some of the standard work holding tools that can be used on the lathe. Then move on to the lathe cutting tools and the controls on the machine. One of the oldest work holding techniques on a lathe is called turning between centers. This technique is primarily used to turn the outside diameter of a shaft. To make this setup, a pair of lathe centers are installed in the headstock spindle and in the tailstock. The work is then center drilled on each end. These holes act as bearing surfaces to support the part directly on the lathe centers. A lathe dog is mounted at one end of the bar stock, engaged into a driving plate, and clamped to the workpiece. This device is used to transmit the driving power of the lathe spindle to the work. Without the lathe dog, the workpiece would simply stop turning as soon as the cutting tool came in contact with it. Turning between centers has an advantage over using a lathe chuck because it uses the lathe's center line and the part center line as the reference to hold the part on the lathe. Regardless of how many times the work is taken out of the lathe, it can easily be replaced, perfectly centered. There are also a number of different types of lathe chucks that can be mounted on the spindle to hold and turn work. The three-jaw self-centering chuck can be used for most general turning operations where round or hexagonal stock has to be held. All three jaws of the chuck work in unison on a scroll system to automatically center the work on the lathe axis. Three jaw chucks come with two sets of jaws. The inside jaws are designed to grip on the inside diameter of a workpiece by scrolling the jaws outward. There's also a gripping surface on the innermost portion of the jaws to hold small workpieces. On this six inch chuck, if the workpiece has to be held on the outside, and its diameter is more than about two and a half inches, you have to install the outside gripping jaws. When using a three-jaw chuck, the ability to accurately center a workpiece depends entirely on the condition of the chuck itself. As the jaws and the internal scroll become worn, the accuracy of the chuck will diminish. The four-jaw chuck is considered more accurate than the three-jaw chuck because all jaws can be adjusted independently. This feature gives the machinist the freedom to center a workpiece to any degree of accuracy he desires. It's also more versatile because it can hold square, rectangular, or irregularly shaped objects as well as it can round stock. It can also be used to hold work precisely off-center or bore holes that are not on-center. The four-jaw chuck requires more effort on the part of the machinist to set up and use, but it's an extremely versatile tool. A wide variety of turning operations can be done on a faceplate. The T-slots and holes on the plate surface can be used to clamp or bolt work directly, or to hold other setup tools like angle plates and clamping jigs. It's very important that any work installed in the lathe is able to resist the pressure of the cutting tool. A workpiece should always be placed as deep into the jaws as possible in order to give it the most support. As a general rule, if a piece of bar stock extends out from the jaws more than three times its diameter, the free end should be given additional support. This can be done by center drilling the end of the workpiece and using a lathe center in the tailstock for support. Here we're using a live center. Rotany live centers can handle higher RPMs for long periods of time because they're equipped with bearings that permit the centering point to rotate with the work. Another option is to use a steady rest. A steady rest is a work supporting device that can be clapped anywhere along the ways. It's usually used when drilling, facing, or boring operations have to be done to the end of a long shaft or part. Three adjustable jaws on the steady rest act as bearings to hold the work on center. These jaws have to be well lubricated so that they don't mar the surface of the part or cause it to bind. A similar type of device is the follow rest. This tool is attached to the carriage and follows the cutting tool for long accurate cuts on smaller diameter stock. The two adjustable jaws give support to the workpiece on the opposite side of the cut to minimize flex under the pressure of the cutting tool.